Greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, today is an incredible day because I thought, what is the best thing that I can give you, share with you, and be here for you? So, the reason I am going to start today with a thought process is because I was talking to a friend of mine. Hi, Barth. Hi, Don. Hello, Barbara. Uh, just a few days ago, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine and she said, well, you're so perfect in being uh, stress-free that everything is effortless for you. Well, I want you to know that I am as human as everybody else here. So with that, let me give you an example. And I'm going to start with this and you let me know what you think about it. Uh, I'm in my bathroom standing uh, in front of the mirror, I was doing something and then I thought about, oh, I have to go to the kitchen and uh, come and clean this. So I leave my mirror, my bathroom, I go to the kitchen, I get the napkin, the paper napkins, I put Windex on it, I come back to the kitchen, I mean, back to the bathroom, and I'm standing there with the paper napkin in my hand, ready to clean, and I'm like, wait a minute, what was I supposed to do? Does that make sense? It's like, it just went off. I have no clue why I'm standing there, and I rushed, and I'm, I don't live in a five-bedroom a mansion or a house or something like that. It doesn't take long for me to go from my bathroom to my kitchen and back. But then in that two minutes, I was like, what was I supposed to do? And I'm just standing there and I started laughing at myself because for that few seconds, I was absent-minded. I was absent-minded because I had so much that I was thinking about, analyzing, judging, criticizing, creating. Um, it, it was just so much in my mind that I completely forgot what I was doing. And you can call it menopausal, you can call it absent-minded, you can call it out of focus, lack of focus, whatever it is. Can you relate to this? Does this ever happen to you? I'm listening. So if it is a yes, you can say yes or do an emoji. Um, if you raise your hand, I can't see you, but you can show me in a way that you can relate to this. That sometimes in your life, you do things and you are in a place that although everything seems flawless, smooth, easy, is yes, I see that the emojis come in and everything. So I want you to know that, yes, Lisa, there you go. Um, stress, being overwhelmed, being judged, being criticized, and feeling out of focus or lack thereof, whatever it is, it happens for so many of us. It happens for me. And at that very moment, and instead of judging and criticizing myself and being hard on myself, what I did was literally laugh. I laughed because it's like, really? Is this really happening and I'm just standing here? Let me focus of why did I bring this? And because I couldn't come up with it, I put it down and I went back into putting my makeup on and then suddenly it was like, 
duh, I was going to clean whatever it was. I can't remember what it was now. So the reason I'm coming up with this is because so many of us are overwhelmed, exhausted, overworked, and under our own scrutiny, uh, perfectionism, whatever it is that you want to call it, that you haven't given yourself a break and saying, there you go, is it fear-based? It's fear-based. Uh, I don't know. Is it fear? There was no fear in there. Uh, and if it was fear, what is there to be afraid of? Truly. There is nothing to fear. Because even fear is false emotions appearing real, which is not reality. It is a perception. I truly believe it's a perception. Most of my clients that come in to, for me to help them with either weight issues, anxiety issues, overwhelm, uh, feeling a block, whatever it is, it's not they're coming here because that is what they feel. <clears throat> it's because they want to find a way to feel better, to feel happier. It's what they want to receive. So if we say it is fear-based, it may be a perception, it may be true at that very moment, but when we look back, it's, I think we are overextended, overwhelmed. We are overachievers. That when someone texts you, and you hear the ding, and if you're eating, you feel the urge, you have to respond. Because if you don't respond, they may think of, hey, how come you're not answering my text? How come you're not answering my phone? So it's that constant expectation, either from someone else or from you, from yourself. And that constant need to be present, to do something, to be uh, functioning, that in itself is overwhelming for you. Here's the reason. Most of my clients who come to me um, feel as if, okay, this is my weakness. I am not good enough, I am not successful enough, I am not this enough, or thin enough, or, do you understand? It's not that feeling of, I am not enough. My question is, when is it going to be enough? So if you are a size eight, and you want to be size four, were you happy when you were size four? You see, a lot of people think that I want to be back to what I was. Because it, if I go back to that size, if I go back to where I was, then I will feel better, then I will feel more in control. But if back there was so good, we would have stayed there. So for whatever reason, we are where we are today because of other circumstances. So if we are not successful enough, and that in itself is a perception, if we are not thin enough is a perception, because let me give you another example. A friend of mine called me, oh, you're so petite. You don't have to worry about anything. You're a size two or four. And I, in my mind, right off the bat, I had an answer. I am not petite. I am thin, but I am not petite. Because petite in my perception is a petite size. And by far, I do not consider myself petite. But According to my friend, who is big and 
tall, I am petite to their perception. So I have to also think it's only in their eyes. It's not about what I think of it because that person didn't ask me, do you consider yourself thin or petite? So when I answer it as I am not this, in a way I dissed that person's perception instead of my asking, what do you consider petite? Because looking at that person being so big that they can just take me and lift me up, I am petite. Does that make sense? Mark, you're so funny. Yes, goddess. Thank you, my dearest. So everything about us, success to someone may be a very highly achievable seven figure is a success. Me being on uh, doing my heel talks for someone may be successful if they are shy to show up and be social and speak. Believe it or not, sometimes I too have a butterfly right before I start. As a matter of fact, today my hair is not perfect, right? I am not in that perfect mode of having everything done. That's because when I walked out of the shower, I had an appointment, so I didn't have enough time to have my hair all done and prepped and perfect right before my appointment. Because my appointment was more important, not my hair. It was the message, it was the connection, it was the what was happening in that appointment that I knew me showing up and what was going to be discussed and it was not that I am being interviewed that was more important and I was sure that at my appointment she was not judging my hair but we were discussing something very important and that's one of the things that soon you will know because we are creating this incredible mastermind for a very small group of women to support one another, to elevate one another, to create excitement in order for us to take one another and keep one another accountable for the next level that we want to achieve personally, professionally, physically, mentally, emotionally. And that's what I do with my clients. But now I am creating another uh, leg with someone else, partnering with someone else to help nine women to elevate and go to a higher bar in every part of their life. So what we think of ourselves most times is more critical than what other people truly see ourselves as. And because of our own self-judgments and self-perception, we are harder on ourselves. We become overwhelmed. So if you can come up with a time that you have been overwhelmed and you get so stressed and you beat yourself up, realize just like me going from my bathroom to my kitchen, coming back with that paper towel that I put the Windex on it. I started laughing because here's one thing I remembered. You Do you remember if you watched it, you can say yes with emoji or so just share yes. Uh, my big fat Greek wedding, the movie that uh, the father used to say, anything you want to fi fix, anything you want to repair or just put Windex on it. At that very moment, have you seen that movie? The Windex that cures everything from zits to cleaning to everything. 
What a great analogy is that? That at that very moment standing in front of the mirror and I had that Windex, I'm thinking, if I could only Windex my stress, if I could only, <laughs> that's right, Marth, if I could only Windex this um, problem, the cleaning, the mirror, or whatever it is that I could clean and bring to clarity and ease, wouldn't that be a great tool? I wish we all had a tool. So I want you to know that we all have a tool, just like this. You see this key? This has become my symbol, the symbol of 3E, which is evoking, embracing, and evolving. So evoking what was, that means going back and helping my clients see the overall picture, not the issue that they come in with. And then embracing where we are at this very moment in life, not what we think of it, what we perceive it, but the reality, the fact, where am I? Am I broke? Am I heavy? Am I smoking two packs? Am I feeling anxious? Am I whatever? And if I am, how is this benefiting me? How is this paining me? And then what is it that I truly want in my life? Who do I want to be? What do I want to create in my life? If it is a size four that I want to be, why? Because I'm jealous? Why? Because in the past 20 years ago, I was, I was a size four? Or is there a wedding that is coming up and I want to drop 10 pounds so I can look good? And then after that day, what else? You see, it's not so much that temporary gratification, but it is once we are gratified, once we get that, is that going to make me feel better about myself? Everything we do, we want to have the understanding that to heal, to feel good, to feel happier. Like my client who came in yesterday and wanted to know about dropping weight and she's under so much stress because she's going to get married in seven months and she wants to become thinner. So I look back and I said, are you happy? And she was taken back. And I said, are you happy? Are you looking forward to this marriage? Or you just want to look good? You see, everything we do, it's kind of, we have to look at the bigger picture of how is this helping me to the next level? So just like that Windex, we can clean it at that very moment. But once I clean it, am I going to keep it clean? Because not everything is going to stay clean, not even I fluctuate in my weight. I fluctuate three to four pounds up and down. I'm not always the perfect size two or four. Sometimes I'm two, sometimes I fit in a four. And, but that is my ideal size. And when I stress, my body holds weight to safeguard me. Understanding that our body is always there to protect us, to safeguard us to help 
support us. And when we have that weight come on, if we only knew that we also have the key, that we can also take the weight off or take the burdens off or ask for help then we've always had the key and we just want the tools to help us get there faster. Here's another analogy. Once I brought it to surface for her, asking the question, are you happy? And she said, I am, but I am under a lot of stress from family and their expectations. And I said, how about we work with becoming clear and having more peace, having less stress, and understanding expectations and coming to a point that you can say, categorize everything, compartmentalize everything, that you can also let go of your self-inflicted expectations to be that perfect daughter-in-law, to be the perfect wife-to-be. And then, once that's in place, perhaps all that weight and the anxiety about the weight will drop off. Wow, what a concept. I gave her a tool that if we do one, two, three, Raise the self-esteem that you are good enough without being so perfect because there is no perfection. I am not perfect right here, right now with this hair, but that's okay. It's okay because I'm here for you. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? And... Hello, Irma. Hi, Andy. Hi, Ty. Hi, Jasmine. Hi, Rose. Thank you for being here. And I want you to know that everything we do, when we come from dropping from the head to the heart and realizing that I am not perfect, you are not perfect, and we cannot be perfect for anyone else until we appreciate who we are. And realize that my weaknesses, and if I find that I have a weakness, that if I am not focused, if I am not detailed, that I can find someone who can help me with that. The same way as I'm partnering with someone and saying, I'm ready to collaborate with you so that I can help other people, other women come from this part to this level to elevate our self-esteem because that's one of my core expertise. I may not be seven-figure millionaire. Not yet. You see, not yet. But is that my goal? Or is my goal to help eradicate and let go of self-imposed expectations and thinking that we are not good enough? I believe that is my goal. That is my platform to help you with that. My ideal has never been the millionaire. And again, I should say not yet. Hmm? So, my cause has been to help you find your own key within yourself so that you can heal within by evoking what was, embracing what is today and evolving to what it is that you want, you desire, you create, you dream of. Because you are good enough. I got into this business 
because I had to heal within myself. You see, hypnotherapy is my tool, one of the tools that I help my clients with. It is not who I am. Coaching, action coaching, and helping you take actions one step at a time is one of my platforms, the tools that I use to help you achieve what you want. I'm an expert in that. It is not who I am. I became a hypnotherapist because I healed myself. My ovarian cysts that after two surgeries, the third time I did not need to go under the knife and have my third C-section cut. So many of you know me. You know I have no children, but I've had three cuts, actually two cuts. On the third one, I healed myself through hypnotherapy that I no longer needed to go under the scalp for the third time. And thank God I did. Because if it was not the journey of me saying enough is enough, I no longer want to have my body creating ovarian cysts. But if it was not for that, you see, the same way as I started saying the body is not there to hurt us, but creates everything that it creates for a good reason, if it was not for that, I would not be directed to an acupuncturist who in turn gave me a sheet of paper and said, for ovarian cyst, hypnotherapy can help. And I said, what does up there have to do with there? But if I were to listen to my body, and that is the workshop that is coming up in August that I put together. It's called Listen to Your Body Talk. It's understanding why we have the weight, why we have the disease, why we have whatever it is that our body has created for us. And if we stay in tune and connect and tap within, we realize it's there for a good reason. And you are here today for a good reason. So because I did not need the third surgery, and I healed it through hypnotherapy, but 18 years ago, I went to school and I became the hypnotherapist that I am today. But I am not a hypnotherapist, but hypnotherapy is a tool that I use I am a servant of helping you know you're good enough. That this body of yours, no matter where you are, big, small, fat, thin, smoker, non-smoker, anxious, not anxious, good enough or not, we are perfect as we are, as you are. And it is through 3E, evoking, embracing, and evolving, that we come to believe I am perfect with my imperfections, with my imperfections. And if this makes sense, and if it resonates with you, then say yes, or instead of showing a hand, say emoji <laughs> or wine or yes. Oh, Vart, I love you. Um, I'm glad this is helping and resonating. Maybe my message is not for everyone, but it doesn't matter if we are a woman or a man, we are a human being. It's like one of um, my clients, uh, Actually, he became a client when he called and said, do you work with gay issues? And I said, no, I don't. I work with human issues. 
because it doesn't matter if I am straight or I am transvestite or I am a father or a little girl. I'm human. You're human. We all go through these waves. And hopefully we understand that when we have fear of swimming, but we can float, we realize we have no fear of that water. And swimming is just a tool. Because if you can float, if you can just snorkel, then you have no fear of the depth either. So it's not the depth, it's not the waves, because that's a part of our nature. It's realizing I have no fear of water, and it doesn't matter if I am swimming or snorkeling, if I am diving or surfing, I like water. And once we come to embrace that part, then we also know that the water, if it's in your bathtub, in a swimming pool, or in, in, in an ocean, when there is no fear of water, when there is no fear, it doesn't matter where you are. You can swim. You can float. You can dive. I hope today's message was beneficial, that you realize you have the key to heal within. And if I can be of help, by all means, call me, message me. Uh, I offer 30-minute complimentary sessions and I can give you the tools to get where you want faster. And that's one of the gifts that I can offer you. Um, in my book, in my Heal um, Thy Mind Body, uh, one of the things that I have in here is Talk the Talk. And it's affirmations and I'm gonna read a few of them it says I only desire to accept myself and appreciate myself for who I am first I easily shed two pounds or whatever pounds you want to create I enjoy being physically active I feel strong and healthy one of the things is being strong and powerful, sensitive and loving. One is light, one is heavy. But when we emerge them and we create this modality of infinity, this power of eight, we realize that we are so much of everything that when we go here we can also come to the lower level and chill and doing nothing and standing and holding space sometimes it's the best place to be so that you can let everything else float. Just like floating in the water. You don't have to be at that high level all the time. So, when we sleep, tonight when you go to bed, give yourself permission and say, tonight I let go and I appreciate, and I accept myself, my light, my family, my body, who I am as I am. I am 
perfect. And may I dream deeply and lovingly. And that is the magic for tomorrow morning as you awaken. And with that, may you heal within with love. See you next week. Okay, now that that session is over, I've got three minutes if you want to ask me any questions or say anything and I will respond to you. Hello? <laughs> okay. Hi, Mariet. Hi, Nairi. How are you, love? How are you doing? Uh, I haven't seen you in two weeks, so hopefully you're doing absolutely wonderful. Vartan, I hope the kids are doing good. Yes? <laughs> Hi, Deborah. Long time no see. How are you doing? Um, let me see if there is anything. Hi, Jassy. How are you, love? Mark, you are incredible. Oh, by the way, have you realized that we are not friends and yet we are corresponding all the time? Have you sent me a friend request yet? Anyhow, okay, Barbara, oh yes. Barbara, what resonated with you? Uh, do you mind sharing what resonated with you? If there is anything that um, you can share with all of us and type. Uh, um, are we still here? <laughs> I know I haven't finished this, so I just wanted to know if there is any questions that I can answer and if you wanted to share anything with everybody. Um, so I will. Okay, I see no response, no questions. Uh, so, all right, I look forward to uh, next week. Hi, Robert, you joined in late. I'm almost done. Okay. Until next week, I bid you goodbye. If you are watching this on a replay, thank you for showing up on the replay. If anything resonates with you during this half an hour, Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, share it with your friends. I am here for you. Until next week. Bye-bye.